Hello my minions, this is the Mass Crusader here and <clears throat> I'm in a redstone world because I want to show uh, some designs. Now, in my next episode I'm going to talk more about this, uh, the reason for this, but I wanted to share my two designs for a 30 second clock. Um, I, I've been looking and I wanted to build a 30 second clock that worked in vanilla Minecraft. Now this is the common 30 second clock that you see. Um, this is 30 second clock number two. This button will turn off this light for exactly 30 seconds. If I click it, you'll see that it turns on this this power that turns off this light and there's an RS Norlatch here which is automatically reset after 30 seconds. And the way this works is this is the one that uh, a lot of people use in uh, in custom maps, games, whatever. Uh, it's almost exactly 30 seconds uh, and it's very quiet there are no pistons or anything really moving there it goes so it was 30 seconds and the way it works is there's a there's a there's a dispenser up here that has blocks in it so this has 36 more times that it can be used before uh, before it runs out so what happens is when you push this button it switches this RS Neural Latch, which turns this off, which powers the piston, and it spits out one of those bricks, and the brick falls through the, uh, the cobweb. It takes about 30 seconds exactly to fall through the cobweb. And then it trips a uh, little bit of tripwire down here, and that uh, resets the whole system. So... It's a 30 second clock. The downfall is this clock needs to be refilled. Uh, the good thing is there's no real lag because there's no redstone or anything. It's just an entity falling. Uh, so it's not going to induce lag. It's not going to be noisy. But, uh, yeah, it, it it's like that. Now the problem with one of these, this exact setup is and i'm trying to show you guys from all angles so i don't have to go over how i built it the problem with this was until 146 when you could get silk touch onto a pair of uh, clippers a pair of shears you couldn't get um cobwebs legitimately in the game it was a a uh, creative option or creative block by default you couldn't you couldn't get it in the game but now you can if you enchant a book with silk touch and then enchant use that book to enchant a pair of shears you can get cobwebs legitimately in the game so uh in my future project i'm going to be using a 30 second timer and i think i'm going to use this one since i can now get cobwebs in the game but for those of you who don't want to waste your time it took me um, about 2,000 levels to get a book with Silk Touch uh, so that I can enchant shears in my Let's Play. So if you don't want to waste your time um, getting the Silk Touch uh, shears to get the cobweb, I've got this guy over here, which is a 30-second timer as well. It is almost exactly 30 seconds. Um, this uses the same RS Norlatch, but it uses two clocks and some kind of simple redstone in order to uh, count off 30 seconds so let me go ahead and describe what's going on first of all um, it's got uses three of these these are uh, smart pistons um, it's a two high smart piston so that this uh, conveyor belt thing gets pushed all the way around uh, I can't take credit for this Etho came up with the idea for a smart piston at least that's where I first saw it but I did create it too high. Now to create a too high smart piston, you need some uh, some redstone, you need a redstone torch, you need non-sticky pistons, and a lever. So I'm gonna grab all that and you go over here. So what you wanna do to start this thing off is you wanna dig down two, one, two, and put down a lever and turn it on. And then redstone, redstone. And then you want this to go into a block with a redstone torch turns it off redstone redstone um, and I'll put that there 
and then redstone and then you want to cut this with another block so that's the redstone portion of it and then piston piston and there's your smart piston now the way this works uh, is if you put a block in the top it won't push until there's a block on the bottom but then it'll push both of them and anytime whoops anytime the, there's a block on the bottom that cuts this roof wire it will push so whoops that won't cut so you'll see both of them pulse each time so that's the two high smart piston um, there are three of those there's one right here there's one right here and there's one right here the reason I, I have two high is because the first one excuse me <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, the first belt is this this uh, stone belt here. Let me turn up the lighting. This first stone belt needs to be solid block so that it triggers the two high piston. The second belt, which is this glass belt, is what actually does the work. Now you can see right here there's a piston and a repeater which is used to pass power through um, to reset the RS NOR latch. Um, this is comprised of actually two clocks. The first one, uh, <clears throat> this right here is a, a monostable circuit, um, monostable, monostable piston, because we don't want more than one little tick going through. And then on that, I've got uh, a wire to keep it pulsed up while this is turned on so that we're not constantly feeding power through. And then the, there's another chain that goes off that direction, which goes into this clock. Let's go build this one real quick. This right here is a one second clock. It's a little bit more than one second. It's about 1.2 seconds because there's 25 blocks in this piston. And, excuse me. And this thing right here takes off. 30 seconds. So let's build this one right here. Okay, so that clock is it's built this way. And it's pretty much the same stuff except we want a sticky piston. So let's go ahead and go into here and we'll swap out for the sticky piston. Now, uh, the way this works is we have a sticky piston and a block. And that right there will control how the pulse the pulse works. Oh, I need a couple repeaters. So, repeater, repeater, block, and then we want a repeater over on this side as well, and then we connect this, redstone, 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 oops, repeater, block, Repeater, block, repeater, and then connect that up with redstone. Now this right here is just your normal clock. To get it to work with that piston thing, we set these to four, 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 and these to one. Now uh, I'll go ahead and pull off something right here. Let's go get a button. I got a button over here. So what this does, this, this will go on forever. Um, so when we get it going, that will now pulse. It's about a one second clock. And the reason I, we've got a monostable piston here is for two reasons. One, we want it to be able to uh, pulse just once when it goes through the other side. But two, we want to be able to put a clock here to be able to stop the clock. With that pulsed up, the clock will stop. So that's that clock. Now, that clock, when it pulses, sends power back around to keep the clock going, but then it also sends power over to this piston. Now this piston is not a, uh, a smart piston. This is the actual one that does the, the pulsating. So, Every time that goes around, it hits this once, which triggers that smart piston, that smart piston, and that smart piston. 
and it loops around. Now this block right here is the magic block. That's why it's red. So what happens is redstone won't pass through glass. You probably know that. So what happens is it this 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 thing. Here, let's go start it up. When I push this button, the uh, the conveyor belt thing will start. This thing pops up so that it doesn't continue feeding power through. This block will continue around until it pops up back over here, sending power through, which will turn off the RS NOR latch and will stop the clock because that piston will go up and stay up when the, when the RS NOR latch is uh, reset and then it will last for 30 seconds. So this is my 30 second, it's like a dual 30 second clock because there's two clocks. This will, this piston ring can is one clock, and then this clock inside is two, and together you get 30 seconds. Now the benefit of this clock is it's more configurable. You can do 15 seconds if you wanted to. To do 15 seconds, you just go to the other side, put in another block, and now you've got a 15 second clock. So, you can turn it on. It'll now last for 15 seconds instead of 30. If you want it to last for 12 seconds, you, sh you can shorten these, and then it'll be 12 seconds. So this one, with a little bit of, of uh, trial and error, will actually be quite um, configurable, and you can have multiple settings. You can also have it pulse every other if you wanted to, rather than uh, every once loop you could have it stop four or five times so this one's very configurable you can change uh, it from about a one second clock to depending on how big the piston ring you want you can get it to be probably two minute clock so that's my clock that one's the one I'm probably going to use in my let's play but I wanted to share both of them Anyways, this is Master Sater. Uh, I'm signing off. Thanks for watching my quick little video on my 30 second clocks, and we'll see you next time. I see you guys are back, or you haven't left. This was my original uh, plan for this thing, but if you'll notice, the, there's the outside clock, and there's the inside clock. The problem was, um, because the smart pistons require a solid block this actually didn't work as a clock because all of the the uh, blocks pass power through so that's why I came up with the too high smart piston and then uh, I was able to uh, control it a lot better so that's what started the whole thing I actually started building that in 1.5 and then 1.6 came along which is why this 30 second clock will probably win even though like I said to get a book that had uh, silk touch on it it took me about almost 3,000 levels uh, that's almost 100 books so you'll see that in my next let's play anyways this is Master Sater signing off and uh, we'll see you next time